Welcome back to 8701. So we switch gear now and talk about quantum electrodynamics, um, QED. And we'll start the discussion by going back to free wave equations. Now, you could argue that we are interested in collisions and we are interested in decays of particles, so why do we discuss free wave equation? Well, the theory we discussed last week, which we used in order to get a hold on uh, Feynman diagrams and calculations was very simplified. And one of the aspects not considered in this theory was the fact that particles carry spin. So we had a theory which you know, only was applicable to scales. Now by walking through wave equations, we can see how we can incorporate or um, uh, make use of the fact that particles actually do carry spin. So let's do this one by one. So we start off with our relativistic energy momentum rela relation. E square is equal to P square plus M square. Um, we express energy and momentum via quantum mechanical operators. And so immediately by putting this in, we find this equation here, which is the so-called Klein-Gordon wave equation. So good. So if you look at this equation, we see there's a second derivative here in time. There's no derivative in space. So there's an asymmetry between space and time. And that is uh, not really useful feature of our, of our wave equation as we, as we uh, uh, want them to be um, Lorentz invariant, for example. So what we want is a first order equation um, in both derivatives. So we'll you know, just start writing this down in general terms and then make sure that this equation holds um, to the relativistic equation we just saw on the previous slide. We we'll just write this down here. We have a first derivative time and a first derivative of space. Let me just say that's a constant between those two, relating those two. Um, so the sigmas are just unknown constants. So if you now try to find by squaring this, try to find the Klein Gordon equation and relate the coefficients, uh, you find this relationship here. So the sigma square are uh, all the same and equal to one, but you also see that. Um, the sigmas, they anti-commutate, commu sorry, um, which is not possible for numbers. So those sigmas need to be uh, matrices. You also see that this is only holding true here for m equals to zero. So this equation here is true for a massless particle. All right, so if we then try to find uh, solutions for those relations, we find that, you know, they can be fulfilled by the two by two Pauli matrices. You might have seen and seen this already in a discussion of, hopefully have seen this in the discussion of atomic physics. And there, um, those Pauli matrices uh, associate spin to uh, electrons. So this is exactly what we have in mind here um, also. Now, using this definition, we can rewrite the uh, Weyl equations to energy times the field is equal to minus sigma times the momentum times the field. And we find a second equation where just the sign flips. Those, the chi here and the phi are spinors. They are two dimensional vectors. And the sigmas are our Pauli matrices. Good. So we have the relation now defined. But we can go a step further. Now, we want to introduce a mass term as well. I said that you know, those hold for massless particles, so we want to introduce masses. So we can rewrite this equation and introduce this mass term here again with a coefficient. And we find now this um, alpha here being, uh, sorry, so this phi here is a four component spinor, and it stands for the particle, its antiparticle, and the two spin states. So that's combining those two equations we had here. So we see one is for particles and one is for antiparticles for the two spin states. So we combine this in one equation and we added this mass term. So if you try to find the solutions here, you find that alpha is a matrix, four by four matrix, which has the sigma, the Pauli matrices on the off diagonal uh, elements. And beta is a diagonal matrix, four by four matrix with um, identity on the upper two components and minus one in the lower two components. So now with this, we can, this is already the Dirac equation. We can rewrite the Dirac equation in a covariant form where you have <coughs> just defined a new matrix here, so-called gamma matrix, which you build out of this matrix beta and alpha, which are defined on the previous slide. 
Good. So good. So we have this this new matrix, this new equation here, which is the Dirac equation, and it holds for particles with two spin states, for example, spin half states, and there it holds for um, particles which have masses. So that's great. So this is now our starting point for the discussion. The next lecture will look at solutions of this equation. <laughs>